In this film, we're going to look at a few reverb treatments for a track that I've got in progress here. Before we go any further, let's just have a listen to where this production is right now. Okay, so you can hear that a couple of the sounds have got some sort of native delay, little echo there right at the end, but there's no reverb being added right now. So what we're actually going to start by doing is looking at the sequence part. This is the main little uh, sort of pitched hook that's happening in the track, sounds like this. And you can see that there's some modulation data here, which is affecting the kind of tone, but you can also hear the sounds bone dry at the moment. Now, what we're going to start by doing is sending this sound to uh, an auxiliary reverb. Let's just set up a brand new auxiliary here. And what I'm going to start by doing is actually sending this to Replica XT from Native Instruments. And what we're going to do here is to use the diffusion algorithm, which acts like a kind of reverb. I want to go for the sort of sparse option and we're going to set the mix at 100% because this is being added on an auxiliary. And we're just going to hear how this sounds and make some changes to uh, the shape of this reverb as uh, it plays back. Now what I want this sound to be is quite dark and quite brooding, so what I'm going to do is to scoop out some of the top end, but also because I don't want it to get overwhelmed at the bottom end, we're also going to bring up this uh, low cut as well and just get rid of frequencies below, I don't know, about 150 hertz. Let's just try that. Now, because even though this diffusion sounds like a reverb, it is still based on a set of echoes, the feedback time becomes crucial. If I make this smaller, then of course the reverb dies more quickly, and if I make it longer, it lasts and sticks around uh, for longer. <laughs> Now that parameter might be quite a good one to automate, so I'm going to do that next and just throw this into latch mode just so we've got some variation in the way that the reverb behaves over time. So that's going to give us some variation and what I'm also going to do is to uh, change using automation again some of the other parameters here, uh, size maybe and movement too. Now, as you can hear, the size parameter is giving us sort of changes in pitch as the size of the reverb uh, changes over time. We get these really nice little pitch sort of swells and bends, and that's working well. Let's see what happens next with movement. <laughs> A 
Okay, so now what we've got is this kind of interesting treatment, just a little echo happening there. Um, we've got this really nice sort of treatment where the reverb is kind of moving and changing and evolving. Let's just see how that sounds with the track now. Let's label this auxiliary as well. Sequence reverb. Okay, so straight away we've got something much more interesting. The sequence is kind of bedded into the rest of the track much better. It's way too loud, this reverb treatment. But before we start turning it down, what I'm also going to do after Replica XT is to put um, a compressor on this. I've already got a sidechain compression treatment being triggered from the kick drum on one of the other sequences here. And what I'm going to do is the same thing right here. We're going to set up something uh, quite sort of smashed. There's a um, an effect here called Extreme Pumping, a preset within FabFilters Pro C2, which I'm going to use as a sort of starting point. And on bus number one, I've got a sidechain trigger coming in from the kick drum. So if in the sidechain area, I select an external signal, we'll see bus one and that kick drum coming in as a trigger for this uh, reverb treatment. Let's just see how that sounds. If I solo these two parts now together. <laughs> And of course, because the compressor is coming after the reverb, it's the reverb that gets ducked quite hard by uh, this treatment. Now, it's still too loud, I expect, so let's just uh, put, bury that in the mix a little bit more. And in fact, it's a lot too loud. That's 15 dB less now. But what we've got is this nice little wash around the sequence. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to bust one of the biggest myths in terms of reverb, the idea, the notion that you simply cannot add reverb to bass sounds. Uh, I don't think that's true. Let's see whether or not we can make a treatment here for the bass uh, part, which actually adds something of value to the mix. Here's the bass. Okay, so what we're going to do is start by setting up a new auxiliary and we're going to send this to the uh, Valhalla Vintage Verb. Now, this is a really nice sort of vintagey uh, reverb and it's going to give us, I think, uh, a nice sort of character to add something a bit sort of dusty or dirty to this uh, mix. I'm going to use the dirty play algorithm for now and let's just see if we can shape something interesting here. Okay, so what we've got now is something which is just going to sort of sit in the mix. You can hear that I'm keeping the sort of attack of the slightly higher frequency content of the actual transient at the beginning of each bass note a bit more than I'm keeping the bass. 
And you can also see that what I've done is to make sure that there's a low cut below 810 hertz. Now, the reason why common advice is that it's a good idea not to add reverb to bass is because what you don't want to do is to make the bass too soupy and full and rich and just lacking definition. It's very easy if you don't EQ the bottom end of reverb treatments uh, for the bass to become overwhelming. But provided you tame the bottom end, uh, you can absolutely add reverb to bass sounds in a way that accentuates some of the mid-range and higher frequency content that tends to exist within those sounds. And if you don't have an EQ actually built into your reverb, then of course you can always add one afterwards. So what we could do would be to absolutely make sure that we've got our tone under control by adding a, an EQ after the reverb. Let's just see what this is doing. And you can see very clearly this low shelf that's been added through the Valhalla uh, plugin itself. But if I wanted to go further and really make sure that I had this under control, then I could add yet more of that actually in a dedicated EQ like this. Okay, let's just try that now in the context of the track. And actually that's really adding some nice weight without becoming overwhelming. And again, we've got um, a control here over the volume simply by adjusting the auxiliary return level. So that's something we could play with further down the line if we decided we wanted more or less of that particular treatment. So now we've got a nice treatment here for the sequence and we've got one for the bass as well, dispelling a little bit of a myth. And then the last thing I'm going to do is to add uh, a reverb, a shared reverb now to this click and rim sound. I'm just going to put these together so that I can send a reverb from these two sounds at once. Um, I'm just going to call this click and rim. And this part sounds like this. And here it might be nice to design something really kind of long and spacey. And for that sort of a treatment, it's really nice to use Sparkverb from UVI. I really like this plugin, particularly for top end type stuff. Um, and there's this excellent collection of presets called Large to Endless. Um, and for things like this sort of a sound, if you want to add some real sheen at the top end, this kind of a treatment is really nice. It's called Vapor Verb, and it's really long. And you can hear that it's super fizzy. However, it's also really nice to sort of grow a new treatment out of... Um, uh, a range of parameters and you can see that if I come into this area of the plugin it's possible to create weird sort of hybrid uh, treatments between different uh, presets so the large to endless area is this uh, color here so what I could do would be to go and find something along those lines the sort of lime color and just begin to sort of drag between these different treatments just to see if I can make something interesting. Let's just run the track and see if we can uh, sort of morph between some settings and see what happens. Okay, so I really like this. It's incredibly sort of super fizzy reverb treatment. Let's just see what that sounds like in context. Okay, 
Okay, so the treatment's really nice, but obviously sticking around for 22 and a half seconds isn't the most practical reverb length. So what I've done is just there to change the decay time to something a bit more manageable. So now we've got three separate reverb treatments, which we've added to the track, uh, bespoke treatments for three crucial elements of it. And this is the overall effect. And again, just as we're listening through, I've just dropped the return level on that spark verb treatment. Okay, so there we are, three separate treatments bespoke created for individual elements of this mix.